And we are live. Awesome. Hopefully we're threat game out to That is not the right game layout. Is that... that is certainly not the right game layout. Uh, what, what is um, going on? That is interesting. Uh... <laughs> well, to the that game is everybody. definitely not the right game layout. Nice. Uh, cool. I think something just broke. Hmm. What could that be? I've got no idea, to be honest. Let me try this again. Have you tried turning it off and on? <laughs> what, what is happening now? <laughs> uh oh. I just text broke staff. Nothing. Please, text staff. We need you. <laughs> yeah, oh, I wow. should be tagged. That should be. So welcome everybody to Black Screen Gameplay. This is our favorite bingo. Because you don't know what to expect and you don't know what you get. Yeah. <laughs> Please, Please bear hang with along us with while us. we uh while we try to fix this. Thank you for your understanding. Yeah. yeah. Please understand. Please understand. Please understand that we're trying to be professional, but we cannot. <laughs> but we will be <laughs> right back in a minute. Enjoy this black screen. Ara. Is not a disaster. Fine on OBS. Have you tried activating, then deactivating? E that is basically what, what I'm trying to do now. I just need to log on on, on the for that. I heard Alt F4 is a pretty good way of fixing any problems you may have. <laughs> yes. Oh boy. Alt F4 Time to do four. that. I know people said Splatoon 2 was a dead game, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> 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 there we go we're just gonna have like in the uh one hour and 40 minutes of a blank screen there we go okay we need to come up with some black screen bingo you okay. guys ready for that <laughs> OBS is here. Uh, we are in the game. I'm gonna browse the game properties. Uh, yeah, please ref. Ah, there we go. Oh, go. Is it? Did you get it? Hey! Ah, look! Congratulations! Yay! Damn. All right. Suddenly it's working. Look what a simple refresh can do. <laughs> refresh. Amazing. Yes. Absolutely amazing. So mm. the solution to this was not Alt F4, but F5. Ah. Close enough. Oh, oh. we should have known. That's genius. <laughs> 200 the all powerful you. F5. <laughs> yeah, close enough. So, I guess whenever you guys are ready, I can give you a countdown. Um, I'm all good. Um, yeah, I'm ready when you are. 
All right, then I'd say we start in five, four, three, two, one, go. Good, Good luck. All right, so welcome everyone to Splatoon 2 Octo Expansion Double Bingo. My name is Obo Oz Tutu, and I'm joined by Pink Boomerang. How's it going? I'm doing great today. Are you ready for some amazing double line bingo? Oh, yes. Um, so in case you don't know what Splatoon 2 is, um, it's a third-person shooter. Um, this is the DLC story. Um, basically involves a bunch of challenges, um, and we're just going to be going around and completing each task that the bingo board demands. And Splatoon just kind of evolves, you know, inking things. Everyone's the enemy, including the floor, so you got to paint it. We use all a bunch of weapons, fight devious enemies, and do really cool stuff. Splatoon 2 is a really cool game to speedrun. Very underrated, in our opinions. That's why we love it. So we're starting off with just a simple tutorial. Not much going on here yet, but we'll get into some cutscenes and then we'll get into the challenges. Um, do you want to explain the story, the, the amazing lore of this game? The amazing lore, yes. So uh, we have plunged into this subway station and we are lost and we're trying to get out. And unfortunately, uh, our only ticket to get out is by completing a bunch of challenges and returning a bunch of uh, parts to a specific machine, no spoilers here, um, to a telephone. And he's going to try and get us out to the promised land. Um, and we just have to go around this metro station completing as many challenges as we can to get these special parts. Yep, they're called Thangs, not Things. Yes, um, it must be Thangs. Yeah. Um, so usually in a normal any percent speedrun, we, we take the um, shortest path to get to all four things, and then we and then we basically just kind of end the game. I'm not gonna really spoil the ending, um, but we're not gonna see the ending. We're just gonna kind of go around the subway system, completing these challenges. Um, we're doing double bingo because it's just kind of a sweet spot, you know, single bingo is just a little too short, um, triple and lockout are a bit too long, so double bingo is just right in the middle, it's a good enough length for a speed run, so that's why we chose double. Um, and usually these boards can range from pretty easy to, oh my gosh, why hard? Um, <laughs> So the we usually, as you may have heard, we've called in these challenges in a way, and from what these demand, they can't actually be challenges. Um, some of these tasks in the subway system are infamously hard, um, and a, a lot of them are usually what the bingo card demands. So prepare to see some top-notch gameplay. From both of us yeah so there's about 80 levels uh in split in the octo expansion here in splatoon 2 and usually if we're doing double line bingo we'll end up going through about half of the levels so we're gonna see a good chunk of them here today so a question right here um how much rng is in those levels is it like a huge amount so you don't know when you're going into a bingo, you don't know what is going to happen, or can you um, kind of predict what is going to happen? Well, Splatoon, all the Splatoon games um, ha are have a very famous history when it comes to RNG. Technically speaking, um, you're there always is um, some sort of RNG. For example, for many of the weapons, um, we have something called um, shot RNG. Um, a lot of the um, the paint shots um, that kind of spread everywhere are RNG. So you know if you try to shoot something, there if you, if you have like a weapon that has a more of a 
weapons kind of have different radiuses for like how spread they shoot. Um, so if you're trying to like shoot a switch um, or shoot an enemy, you could have you could get really unlucky and not completely shoot it all the time. It's our weapons have that sh sort of RNG spread. Um, but it's not too of a big deal. We speedrunners in Splatoon have gotten pretty used to this aspect. Um, so, I mean, you know, that always... that's usually always happening. Um, but there's not usually big amounts of RNG in Splatoon games. Um, not in the Octo expansion. We're not going to see too much big amounts of RNG. So it's not like a Mario Party kind of game. You can actually no. kind of predict what you're doing and yeah. what you are going to expect from this run or from this bingo. Usually, I mean, the most RNG that we worry about, if anything, is the bingo card, really. <laughs> but of course, you know, that's... yeah. <laughs> I, I guess that's always the case with every single game. Oh, yeah, um, of course. <laughs> But it, it, it's good to know. So you can kind of predict you're going through the story, I guess. Because I, I don't know the game. Like, I'm, I'm completely new to this. There's a bit um, of a story. Um, we're not going to be, uh, like, going all the way through it. Um, because... Yeah, no, that'd take way too long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's not like Mario 64, um, where the goal is to completely everything and then go fight Bowser, the final boss. This, we're just... Mm -hmm. That you, we finish when we complete the um, two, two bingos. Because um, to do an any percent run, usually after we finish the subway station, then we have about like 20 more minutes of gameplay in the end game. Um, Plus like, you know, 10 minutes of cutscenes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we, we decided... You cannot skip cutscenes. No, yes, you, you can that. skip cutscenes if you've already seen them, but we have to start from a new file, so we can't do that. Oh, okay. Okay, yes. that makes sense. So you always have to start from a new file in this bingo, I guess. Yes. Correct. And so... we have uh, two big first choices to make at the very start of the run, we can either choose to go left side or right side. Basically, once we start off and we beat the first tutorial level, you might want to call it, um, we can either go left or right, and both sides of the map have very different things on them. Left side generally has more stuff, though, but we have balanced the bingo card to make it so there are more things that we can do on the right to make it more viable. Um, but generally, like one of the bigger decisions is if we're going to stay on the left side mainly or the right side but usually for the first like 20 minutes or so we'll just stick to doing the any percent route because that gets us a lot of the stuff that we need along the way anyway yeah it, it the game is is pretty linear at the beginning so you usually find us playing the same levels for the first part and then we'll start just kind of going our own pathways so you're pretty much like just choosing to do another route um, when it comes to like, you know, like doing those tutorial kind of stages or the stages you have to do. But then you're going to do, you know, whatever required on the, uh, on the, on the bingo. Or are you going to do, or you, uh, you have to do the same stages and then just continue. I don't know how like new game in this game works. If you have like a little bit of you know space to 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 do something else than the other person does oh yeah it's it's very flexible um we'll see a lot of people do a lot of different things so it's really just dependent on uh what the runner wants to do cool yeah um and as we do levels the map um, of the subway system kind of starts to unravel itself um, but if we do want to get somewhere, like in a particular spot on map, we have to get there first. We can't just like skip over to a certain level. We have to like make our way there. So like we have to make complete a couple levels that we don't need in order to get level we obviously do need to get to. Yeah, I guess that's the that's the curse of a new new game file. Yeah, it would it, it would always be like that in in every game. 
but that's that's really interesting so you can take a couple of different routes and it depends on the runner and what goals you are going for for like you know the double bingo in your case mm -hmm. so it, 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 we're going to see some different gameplay um across the run i'd say absolutely Something else to note, uh, across all the missions, some of them have uh, multiple weapons to be used, which is why we'll see on the bingo card here, we have like a lot of uh, cards like just beat three levels with Charger, beat five levels with Splatling. So there are a lot of levels that we can just do with basically whatever we want. Um, some levels have some types of weapons, other levels have others, right? So that all kind of adds into what we want to really go for and... Also, your knowledge of the map and, like, knowing where, okay, maybe I gotta know where the data point levels are, because I have to go complete those. Or maybe I want to know where the balloon pop levels are, so and you have to go, go do those, right? Yeah. Yeah, knowing the map is key. Is the map ever going to change? Or is it, like, level dependent? So if you choose, like, a mission or something like that? Is it ever going to be the the same map, or is it like RNG? What kind of the map, map is always it? the same? Yeah, right. the, the map doesn't change. So you can kind of plan ahead if you have like a certain goal, or you, if, if you want to go a certain route, you can know. All right, I have this in this map. You can go this in this way, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, again, knowing the map is and where everything is, is very key. So since you have a um, really tight estimate on this, like with one hour 40, that's for me at least from a speed running perspective, um, it's kind of a really tight goal to get like uh, two bingos. How is it for any percent in this game? Like like what determines any percent, like, for example? Is it going to be like, you know, story mode percent or do you have to do something different? You know. Um, any percent, that. yeah. Any percent is just beating the main story, um, and there's 80 levels total. Um, in any percent, I believe you only complete like what was it, 18? Yeah, something like that, 18 or 19. Yeah, I believe you only. I think it was 19. Yeah, you you only complete about 19 levels. Um, total before you get the four things and then go into the end game. So and the end game is is kind of short, I guess. Yeah, the, the uh, world, record, world record is um, one oh eight twenty three. Wow. Although the much better category is obviously all missions where we do all of the missions. And we've actually seen some improvements in that category very recently. It's now a 254, right? Yep. That's not too far off from the any percent. No. It's like, you know, one and a half hours plus. Yeah. Normally you have like these any percent categories, which are super short. Then you have like the hundred percent categories, which are like, you know, three hours longer. Um, so what determines 100% for this game? 100% uh, so is beating every level with every weapon on every stage. So, you know, we can, like, all missions just does one weapon on every level. But for the mm -hmm. levels that you can choose between three, you have to do the same stage three times with a different weapon. And you have to do that for every stage. And that takes a little over six hours. Oh, damn. So maybe you can also answer why is there not like a new game plus or maybe there is a new game plus for this game 
So we but... do have a new game plus for the hero mode portion of this, but not Octo expansion. Mm -hmm. uh, and the hero mode is just going through like just the levels and we have upgraded weapons, so it goes by a lot faster uh, than it normally would in regular any percent for hero mode. But we have not gotten a new game plus for Octo expansion, unfortunately, which would cut down a lot of time. I think, was it Boom Noise that did a new game plus for Octo expansion and he got like 55 minutes? Uh, a new Something game? like that. Well, like, he was experimenting with like a new game plus for OE. Um, he got like 55 minutes, I think. If I'm not mistaken. I don't know if it was Boom Noise or not. It might have been someone else. So what do you think? How much time would it save over a, like a new game file? Would it make a huge difference or would you say, you know, it's it's like maybe 30 minutes on a 100% file or, you know, what what are your thoughts on that? You, even if you um, don't have any person. It really or... only is worth it on any percent because uh, like the time save is just that much bigger where any percent just becomes more convenient to run. Mm -hmm. Um, but for like all missions or 100%, there's really no point. Like you might as well just do it from a new file. It just makes more sense. Yeah, I, I guess 100% makes a lot of sense for, you know, a new game file. But like any percent or like, you know, new game plus any percent would make maybe more sense if you have like better weapons upgrade, you know, that kind of stuff. I don't know how it is in that game because I never played Splatoon uh, 2 by myself. Um, but I don't know how, how much of an impact it would make on the any percent file in general. I mean, I'd say if you're... There's really not... When it comes to gameplay um, inside the levels, there's really no difference between New Game Plus and any percent. Because each level is going to stay the same. Um, like, I know that's usually true for a lot of games. Um, but in the, like, for example, the hero mode, um, NG+, all the levels and gameplay are actually a lot different because you basically have, like, a lot, you know, upgraded weapons. You know, you have a lot better supplies. So usually the gameplay goes a lot different in that story mode. Um, but when it comes to Octo Expansion, every level is going to be exactly the same no matter if you completed it or not um so that's why the only thing that would really be different would just be kind of the route because since every level wouldn't be unlocked you can just travel right right to the level that you need to go to so that's why it would be shorter um but we do any percent just because it's just kind of a lot more authentic and just kind of like you know Explore and, and try to traverse the map um, and trying to find like you know the quickest pass. And if we really do need a break, then we do have the cutscenes to rely on, even though it is not that uh, long of a run. Yeah. Oh, wow. I can't believe I said that. I choose to use my breaks playing Tetris, so. <laughs> yeah. You said like you want to choose your pranks to play Tetris. So are there like um, cutscenes that much that you can actually play in another game or like 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 what determines you can you, you can do something else when you know speedrunning this game, I would say. In, in any percent there is there's there's like there, um towards the end there is a a, a nine minute cutscene. Yeah. It's about yeah, nine minutes. Eight or nine minutes. I mean, that's quite a lot. Yeah. I mean, it's cutscenes. That, that, that is quite huge, I would say. I, I, I don't know from this game personally, but I know it from other games. Um, like, I used to speedrun Jet Set Radio Future, which has like, I think like 50 minutes total cutscenes, which you can't skip. You maybe have to press like A once or twice. And... You know, I, I I took those ones for a pee break, and you know it's it's not really interesting because you cannot skip it, but it's interesting to see those games, 
that are kind of new, I would say, and still don't have the feature to just skip it all and just, you know, let, let you do whatever you want to do. Because, like, if, if you played the game once or twice, you still want to maybe skip the cutscene because you have seen it all together. So, um, what about boss fights in this game? Uh, I, I've seen you, you guys, um, doing some stuff, but it's also like, uh, um, for example, uh, Ob uh, Oboe has like, um, a bar, um, uh, below his timer. Um, yeah, so this is a mission I'm doing right now is called Girl Power. It's basically where you have to defend an orb. Um, from an army of enemies for um, a minute and a half. So it's it, it's just like a timer that runs down. It's not like a, I don't know, a boss, yeah. boss health kind of thing. It, it's kind of it's kind of like um, it's, it's like a survival. Is it? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, it, a... I, I get what you mean. So, so you have to survive for a certain amount of time and yeah. keep your health up during that time and. So you not die, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and there are enemies trying to attack the orb. So if the orb loses all of its health, then you have to start over, which is really fun when you're going for a world record, mm. and you just lose a minute and a half. So we is the like the, the spawns that come in here in this um, kind of scenario, is this RNG or is it not? The spawns are always the same for girl power. And for every stage, I believe. I the, be the behavior of the enemies can be a bit RNG at times. Yeah. So it's, it's only like how the, the enemies will do certain stuff. But it's not like, you know, you don't know where to go. So um, you're trying to go into the same place every single time. But you don't know how they will act. Yeah, that's usually how okay. I hear it. Generally, enemies are pretty consistent in their movement, but very rarely will be like, okay, why are you going to the left instead of the right like you usually do? Yeah. But like I said, that's pretty rare. Do we have them for animation? Absolutely. Awesome. Um, so we've got $10 from... Uh, that just was written. Uh, <laughs> it is reading, can you crash Splatoon? I don't think so. Um, actually, not in Octo Expansion as far as I know, but I know you can. I've seen a video of someone crashing hero mode. Um, it was like they died in a level three times and tried to exit the stage before it took them to a game over and it crashed the game. This is news um, to me. Oh, yeah, so it's yeah. Really not Tony Blones. There, there's a video of it on YouTube. Um, at Tony Blones, um, you can check it out. It's called Crashing Octavio. Um, yeah, he basically just went into the level of the final boss, died three times, and usually when you die three times in the level, it you get a game over. Um, but then he tried to exit the level before it gave him the game over screen, and it crashed the game. Um, that's the only, that's all I know of. So that, the only possible crash that is... That's interesting. Yep. I don't know if there are any others. If there are, then I don't know. So You might be able to crash it through the multiplayer, but I'm sure if you could have, then they've probably patched it by now. Yeah. I guess with such a game like on the multiplayer, constantly watch over that. Yeah, th th this game has been out for a while, and it's gotten constant updates. At least they're n done with the updates now, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they've been done with the updates for a little while now. But it's a pretty well-refined game at this point. Speaking, you know, like, of updates and all that, are there a was there anything that was useful, like, in the context of Splatoon 2 speedruns or bingos that was patched? I don't think anything has been changed through the single player. It's just been mainly the multiplayer. 
Yeah. Because I know the changes they made in multiplayer to the certain weapons and such have not carried over to Hero Mode. Oh, right. That's yeah. Cool. Or Octo Expansion either. There's another interesting question I have right now because um, you were talking about multiplayer. Can you play it on co op? Like in this mode, at least, or do you have to do it by yourself? Or, um, can you say like you have like a co-op run where you can you know make things a little bit faster, or maybe not? No, there's no co-op for uh, these modes. No, not unfortunately. Yeah, we we usually yeah we usually call them the single player, um, and usually that means single player. <laughs> So it's all no. by yourself all the time. Like if if you play hero mode, you're going to be all by yourself, and you you have to do all the stuff on the bingo board, um, on the bingo board um, by yourself. Yeah. Maybe have some time for some announcements. Of course. All right. So I want to talk about our good donation incentives here right now. Uh, we have some upcoming goals or bid wars that is in the future. First of all, we have the Binding of Isaac uh, Afterbirth plus minus. Um, it is the Cedar's bonus run with um, SIL, uh, SIL, I don't know how to pronounce this, and Megaplast as a start, which is still a $50 to go. Uh, well, I also want to remind you that you can win all of the five prizes we have currently with a $10 donation. Um, as well, we have a Paper Mario Choose the Bingo line for um, about $50. We have Paper Mario Crash the Game, which is currently at 10 out of $100. And a Wind Waker Randomizer Temporary Reverse Controls for 20 out of $50. So, um, also a short reminder, if you are going to donate, even if it's just a dollar, the next four donators going to make it into my Worms Bingo team, which is going to happen um, around 2 p.m. my time, which is the German time. So it's like, you know, I guess 8 a.m. Uh, U.S. time, a little bit later on the Japanese time. Um, so the next four donators, whoever that is, you're going to make it into my team. And uh, you can donate uh, donate one dollar. You can donate ten dollars. Going to make it into my team, and we're gonna rule it. I'm just gonna say that. All right, hand it back to you, people. Thank you. All right, so we're starting to kind of put some squares in. Usually, the the beginning is really slow since we're getting into the game, um, but then we kind of start to pick up um, as we're now actually getting places and kind of figuring out our path usually around this time it's good to kind of figure out what what we're doing oh it's weird it, it usually come it's it's really hard to find just what ways you want to go uh, because there could be a row with like a bunch of really good and easy stuff in it and then there's just one really hard thing that makes it makes the entire row not worth it and so then we have to okay um what's the next best thing there's never usually what i like to call a perfect row 
You usually just have to find something that, you know, what's, you know, what's the fastest, obviously. Okay, so, so what would you think is 100% easier than a blackout bingo? Because you, you, you know what to do in which order in a 100% run? Or would you say, okay, a blackout bingo may be a little bit faster because I can do this and that in a different order? Or is it like, you know, it, it, com it all comes down to the same thing? Well, I'm sure doing blackout would be faster because 100% is doing everything. Um, blackout would definitely mean doing a lot, but you definitely wouldn't be doing everything. So, so how much freedom would you have in in the blackout? Yeah, you probably have to play a lot, like you're doing right now. You're playing a lot of, you know, the the, the single player game. But how would it affect it, like a blackout? Do you have to do all that stuff, or you, can you just say, okay, I'm starting off a a bingo save file kind of thing, and 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 do all the missions I need to, and collect all the stuff I need to, like. How is it for you? You know, do you have to start always on a um, on a new file, and what makes it different compared um, to uh, one hundred percent? I think we always start from a new file. Yeah. Whenever we, no matter what type of bingo we're doing, I think we always start from a new file. Also, I don't think anyone's ever done a blackout for this game. <laughs> Because it yeah. just take way too long. Mm. Yeah, like blackout I, I, is, I think, is definitely longer than all missions, which is already three hours. So. Yeah, I, I've never seen anyone do blackout before. I mean, I mean, three hours is reasonable for like at least a blackout. I would say. You know, we we have seen on OOT like out before and if you get screwed you get absolutely fucking screwed oh yeah for sure so i don't like i don't know you guys up for like a blackout in general or would you say okay i'd rather do 100 percent and and you know know what to do know which route to go what what, what would you guys prefer would you say like hey man okay i, I like the randomness of a of a blackout bingo or would you say hey, okay i mean i like I'd my route and i, I want to take it i mean i'd probably do a blackout bingo I, I i'd probably be the one who would make the most sense to do it because <laughs> i i do 100 percent a lot more times than i would like to admit i do a lot of long categories in splatoon 2. you do all the long categories i, I do all the categories <laughs> including the extremely long ones What's the longest one? Um, um, oh, oh. <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked. Um, the longest category in Splatoon 2 is 1100%, where you do 1000% in hero mode, which is cl uh, do every single weapon with every single weapon, which takes about 12 hours long. And then you do 100% in Octo Expansion, which takes 6 hours. So in total, wow. that is... Um, I actually have the world record in this category. My world record is about 19 hours long. That is that is quite amazing. <laughs> I, I, I hate that you actually can stick to it ad and and make it happen. Is really amazing. I know uh, there there are a lot of games which take some time for the the 100 category. We all know of those, you know, 30 plus hours speed runs or like the the 300 hours for like some RPGs. Yeah. But to actually have that in, you know, in a shooting game, I would say. Like, yeah, we, we have our own, like, Mario 602 speedrun or whatever. <laughs> that is amazing. Like, did you, do it, uh, did you do that on purpose? Or we're like, okay, I'm, I'm just going to do it for the purpose of it. And I'm, I'm going to stick with it. And, you know, <laughs> whatever. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to do it. Uh, I did it for the world record, man. Um... <laughs> yeah, world record, as long as the category it is, it was actually just really free, so... Yeah, yeah I guess. The guy who had the world record before me, um, 
you know, that was the first time anyone has ever did that kind of run, so it was really rusty. Um, and so I just kind of like, I just kind of studied it, and then I just did my own run. Um, and then I decided to try to, you know, to just take 20 hours out of my schedule uh, to do a run. Mm. And that was all the way back in like April of this year. Um, and then I did it again in September, and that's where I got the current world record stands, 19 hours. I guess it's still super tedious to do such a long run. I mean, every every like 100% run takes a little bit of like you know dedication, I would say. But to do like a 20 hour plus run, where you basically have to do the same thing all over again, it seems super tedious to me. So you know, props to you for sticking with that and actually, you know, trying to get it and trying to do it as fast as possible as well. Yeah, there's a lot of repetition, especially in the hero mode category, because there's only like, I believe it's about 30 levels total, and you have to do each one nine times. So, there's a lot of repetition. It's not fun. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I see with most games. Um, I don't particularly run, uh, you know, I would say like long games. But when I um, I try to route a Gundam game, um, which is Gundam versus Gundam for the PSP, and it also requires multiplayer to get all the achievements, so I like kind of estimated it before I tried to run it, and the estimate was about 600, 650 hours with a partner that you need for all the achievements. Um, which has constantly to be online and to be like with you, it is not fun. When you're just trying to go like you know for old story mode, it would be like maybe maybe I don't know 30 hours or so. But if you're trying to 100% games like that, sometimes or like all achievements, that is, you sometimes have to go super out of your way and and. and you know, try to make it possible. Maybe we're friends, and so I, I have mad respect for you guys just trying to, you know, get the best time possible in a game that is also having its, you know, flaws when it comes to like achievements or like 100% kind of stuff or like 100% completion. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely not a flawless speedrun. I think that's also kind of, you know, there's definitely some reasons why it's not as popular as many other games. Um, but personally, it's just so enjoyable that I don't really mind. Um, and that's usually what a lot of the more dedicated runners would say. Just in general, this game is fun. Like, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like, just from seeing the gameplay, I'll probably enjoy it if it wasn't on, uh, on the Switch alone. Um, I'll probably enjoy it more on the PC because I'm, I'm I'm not really a controller first person shooter guy. But how are the controls for you? Like, do do you mind that it's on a Switch? Or um, would you say, hey, if there were uh, would be a, like a PC version or something like that? Would you rather enjoy that, or would you still play it on the Switch? Not not considering like frame rates or anything, just from the gameplay perspective. Um, I don't know. I enjoy it on the Switch, um, because the Pro controller on the Switch is a great controller, and I just I can't really imagine playing this game with anything else, really. Yeah, so the motion controls in this game, a lot of people would think are actually just, like, terrible, but they work really well for what the game is. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's another thing, the motion controls. Yeah. I guess just, like, generally, it wouldn't feel the same with a mouse and keyboard, but, I mean, aiming would probably be a bit nicer, even though motion controls, it does feel really good already. That, I guess that's, um, that's a good thing. Co uh, Imagine like playing this game on a on a Wii. I don't know like 
the, the first platoon was on a, a Wii U, if I'm That's correct. remembering that yep. correct, correctly. And that was a bit of, you know, a letdown for me at least, because I, I hated the Wii U controller. <laughs> it was awful. So I, I, I don't yeah, have we'll a Switch. I, so so I can't compare those two. You know, what's your opinion on that? I mean, playing Splatoon 1, because um, I do have that as well, playing it on the gamepad, it's a little bulky because it is a big controller. Um, I still use motion controls. Um, I do find playing Splatoon 2 a lot better because, I mean, not only it's more crisp game, um, but also, you know, the controller is, you know, a lot smaller than the gamepad, so it's a lot more comfortable. Um, and, the mo and the mo controls are a lot more precise um, and accurate. Um, but I still enjoy playing Splatoon 1, uh, even going back. So, what would you guys prefer? Would it be like a, um, like using a pro controller on Switch or like using the, the actual Switch controls, if you can say that? For this game, at least. You mean the Joy-Cons? Yeah, the Joy-Cons or like, a, I don't know, may maybe a, a GameCube pad or like a pro controller for this game. What would you guys prefer on this one? The pro controller is definitely preferred. Like, it's honestly like, probably my favorite controller that I've ever used. Mm -hmm. um, and funnily enough, you can use a GameCube controller for this, but you can't swim through your ink. Uh, and then there's like something else you can't do just because the game controller doesn't have the buttons for it. So, so you can play the game, but you cannot play it to the full or like with all controls, I guess. Yeah, you can do that with any Switch game as long as you have the GameCube controller adapter. But most of the games mm -hmm. just you don't have all the functionalities available. So it really only makes sense to have a pro, uh, GameCube controller for your Smash. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, that makes sense. <laughs> Glad we have those back as well. You know. um, I hope Nintendo makes you know, those, those pro controllers for all those like Switch players, Wii U players in the future. It, it is kind of a bummer that you sometimes need a specific controller for a specific game. Um, at least on Nintendo consoles, because like every PC game, you can play with a 360 controller, right? And it's not going to in impact your gameplay that much when you have another controller, like a PS4 controller or anything. But when it comes to like Nintendo games, you probably want to have that controller that is designed for the console, I guess. Like, like for Melee, you wanna you wanna have the the GameCube controller, or for Splatoon 2, you wanna have the Pro controller to have like the best possible controls. Yeah, I, definitely. I mean, like when it comes to a lot of Switch games, you can usually choose you know to play it um, with the Joy Cons or in handheld mode or with the Pro controller. Um, a lot of people would usually prefer the Pro controller because um, it's. It's just a lot better. All right. Do we have a little bit of time for some, you know, don donation plugs, I should say? Yes, absolutely. All right. I think we have a $10 donation. I don't know if that um, has been read by anybody, but I want to talk about Pure Earth. But just a little bit. Um, pollution and toxic contamination primarily affects poor women and children in developing countries. If you want to help solve this, please type in exclamation point donate in the chat, and a link will appear where you can donate to our marathon. And obviously, all money made goes directly to QL. Also, if we have a $10 donation by you. We have some amazing prizes. Um, which is currently the Chibi Robo fan art made by Flixie Ferris. Uh, the bingo phone mug. You know, if you like to drink some tea or some coffee, you're gonna need that <sighs> mug. I also provided two games for the Xbox in um, in the PAL version, which is Halo, 
you know, Master Chief Collection coming out. If you want to play the OG Halo, you better get that right now. It's a minimum donation of $10, as well as Jet Set Radio Future for the Xbox Call. It is indeed a standalone version. Comes with a handbook, comes with a cover, comes with a... Clean this. Gotta tell you that. This one is getting more and more rare. So if you have those $10 left, do something good. Maybe consider getting one of those prices. It's really tight right now. So now many people have donated $10 or more. You may want to get it. Also, we have an original SNES controller in crisp mint condition. Hey, if you want to get that, $10 or more. Let's go for it. And I think we have a donation, but I have to look it up. So I give it back to you for the moment being. And maybe I'll Hello. be right back in a moment. We do not have a donation. Um, but absolutely, uh, indeed, those prices are really, really exciting. Um, just keep in mind that the games are in power. But I think you said you included uh, some notes about how you could just find a way to play it in NTFC. Um, yes. Indeed. So even if you are not in a PAL region, you still have potentially a chance to still play the game uh, if you win it. Uh, if you're outside those regions, because instructions will be provided on how to play with that. Yes, that is right. So I will give you some instructions that come with the game as well. So we have a disc version of it. You can either sell it or, you know, keep it for for valuable reasons. But I also will have you some some note where you can, you know, do something to your Xbox to actually play the game and to actually have fun with other games as well. So if you are happen to have an NTSC Xbox from the US or from Japan, maybe. Okay. It's it's still worth it. You can still play the game at 60 frames per second. Hey, man, that's, that's an achievement for Xbox standards, at least. <laughs> 60 FPS. How about that? That sounds fun. Yeah. 60 FPS. Unless Let's be real. Th that wasn't the case for most of the games of this area. <laughs> uh, I, I played a lot of PS2 games that weren't running on si uh, 60 FPS, and yeah, it's a bummer. It's a bummer. But I know for a fact those two games, Halo and Jet Set Radio Future, will run at 60 FPS on your NTSC console, and I will give you the instructions to do so. So don't worry about the PAL. You know, get in some ching ching. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and just lastly, if I mean, uh, lastly, uh, remember that because one hour from now we'll be having uh, the Binding of Isaac After Plus. That will be the next run. And for it, um, there is an incentive for a seeded bonus run. With Dazzle and Megaplast uh, as a start, and that needs $50. Uh, we're still sitting at zero, so there's, um, yeah, there's still all of that to go, but it can be it can be done. No way. So yeah, just wanted to say that. Um, so if you're going to donate for this incentive, now's the perfect time. All right, back to you guys. We have some some you know. Bingo, bingo incentives here, uh, right now, while we talked. Oh. Explain yourself. Wait, we have incentives or? Uh... I, I, I mean, you made some goals while we were talking. We were talking for quite some time, so. Oh. Uh, explain those things you might have been done sure. while we were 
<laughs> we were uh, talking. So I completed two boss fights. Um, there's four. There's four total um, on the map. Um, I completed a. There was a goal where I had to complete a certain level with a certain weapon. Um, that was the exciting things I did. What about you, Mr. Boomerang? Um, well, I completed a specific level with the Bamboozler, which is a really fun weapon to use. Um, oh God. and you know, just, I'm just going around beating levels with certain weapons. I'm trying not to let you know which weapons I'm going for, <laughs> but I went for some certain weapons. Yeah, that's really about it. We, we actually have a lot of weapon specific cards on this one. So we have like a specific row or column that you both are going to aim for. Yeah. But like when, when we get it, you, you, you'll see. The suspense builds up. You'll see. I am getting really unlucky. See, on my end, I really don't have many quote-unquote objectives to do, but it might take a while, because these are probably the hardest ones. So those objectives would be the ones that take a while to do, and go to long-term in the front, would they? Yeah, the more longer term goals.
So, if I may ask, what do you think, um, like in the context, running Splatoon 2 be like the most vital skill have? Do you think? Um, I believe just learning how to speed run this game, um, because uh, there's a lot of um, really cool um, gifts and tricks. Uh, could deal. And also, when it comes to speedrunning Splatoon, it's really not usually about pulling off a lot of glitches or really precise tricks. It's usually execution uh, and just kind of completing the levels um, in the normal way as fast as possible. Yeah, it seems to be extremely movement-based and uh, into the ability to well, as you said, execute those levels properly, which is a really different kind of skill set compared to many other uh, types of speedrun. Like, for instance, you look at a game such as Ocarina of Time, for instance, where unless you play categories such as Glitchless, uh, it's a game that heavily relies on glitches, but so far from what we've seen here, it uh, split into dozens. In general, uh, what, what do you, would you say about glitches of this game or any other thing in this like uh, whether it be the first splitting game or main game um, 
honestly, you know, in the eyes of the community, there's really no such thing as what we call glitches um, in the Splatoon in Splatoon speedrunning. Really, we usually call them just like skips or tricks. There are a few times when we kind of like um, take advantage of like little quirks um, in the game mechanics. Um, but there's never usually something that we would go as far as calling it a glitch. I guess maybe depending on how you see a certain trick or skip, you may call it a glitch, but we never really call something a glitch. Yeah, like right now I'm trying to attempt a little skip here, which isn't really a glitch, we're just more abusing the game mechanics. It, it, there's never really a trick where we're trying to like get out of bounds and try to get to the exit from a completely unintended way. Um, no, it, it, it's it's interesting. It, it's very different. That's a pretty different perspective. Um, like on speedrunning, quite like compared to quite m many other games. Because usually people usually associate speedrunning in like in whichever sense of the word you may take it as with glitches and breaking the game completely. So it's a change of pace, really. Yeah, like the one big example I think we have of like one of our biggest skips is uh, Octoshot skip um, in the OE Any Percent, which is not really a glitch, but it feels like it because it's so RNG based. Basically, where there's this one target uh, we have to hit, and the only way we can do that is by getting the Octo Shot, except we decided to skip that and do this dumb bomb throw where we only have like a 10% chance of actually getting it. But it's more of a skip than a glitch, if anything. We recently, we get a bomb to try to, um, you, we, we get a bomb to try to, um, to activate a switch that normally in ink, um, a, or usually like a gun would usually unlock. Um, and usually to do that, we, we throw a bomb on top of a wall, so the splash radius would try to hit the switch. So we can skip a section, um, but the problem is the bomb and its ink sh is RNG. So there's about a 10% chance that a little um, ink puddle will go and hit the teeny tiny switch um, to skip the section. Um, so that's why it's really it, it's been called one of the most regrettable tricks in speed run <laughs> because it, it usually can make or break a run. Many world records have been lost to that. Oh, that, yeah. that's and, and only and only like world record pace runners go for it. Oh my, yeah, this this sounds like an insane kind of. Such a, like such a low chance, definitely. Um, Really, for, for those that go for world record, it's twice yet. Yeah, because yeah, like you, you pretty much you you're doing about an hour of skill based stuff, and then you're just pretty much just thrown into a lottery um, if you're gonna get if you're gonna be on world record pace or not. And then there's like what ten more minutes of gameplay after that. Yeah. Which is all really hard. Oh yeah. So even if you do manage to get it to, uh, to get a proper end game. Yeah, you, you still gotta do more skill based stuff afterwards and it's probably arguably some of the hardest in the game. But honestly, if we're going to be fair, it's not much compared to hero mode. <laughs> hero mode is where the RNG is at. The entire final boss of that game is entirely RNG. And it varies by two minutes. Yeah, two minutes, I'd say. 
So when you mean it varies for two minutes, that means... If you get bad RNG, you gotta wait two minutes before you can... Try again? Is that, is that what you mean? Um, not exactly. So how that boss fight works is... Um, th this boss basically throws the, these fists at you, and you have to hit them back. Um, and there's four phases total, and you need to hit se uh, I believe it's seven... What's it? No, eight. Eight fists back to end the phase. And so all of Octavio, which is the final boss's name, um, all his actions are random. So it's completely random whether he decides to give you a fist or not. Um, so, you know, there's sometimes we could decide to give you, like, you know, th four in a row and, you know, end the phase quickly, or he can give you a lot of attack, he can throw a lot of attacks at you that you don't need, which can make the phase longer. Um, so that's what usually constitutes between good and bad RNG. Oh, I see. We have an entire separate category that just, like, excludes Octavio from the run entirely, called uh, New Game Plus Octavialist. Just because we don't like him at all. Yeah, it, it's... That's why kind of the any percent and a lot of the categories are can be really unforgivable, especially when you get really good at them. Yeah, that would make sense because no no one would screwed over by RNG. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of RNG, like as of how would like obviously not that specifically overall RNG even in the context of bingo, um, how much does that affect for instance the run you're having right now? In, like would you say RNG is a big factor uh, so far. Um, Not at all, really. There is like uh, one mission where it's just all RNG, which we also call bingo. Uh, basically, we have to knock these eight balls around, and it technically isn't RNG, but it's so precise to hit uh, an eight ball like where you want it to go that it's basically just RNG. But apart from that mission, there really isn't any RNG. Uh, throughout the game Besides like weapon RNG and just where your shots land. Yeah but It's nothing major RNG No, not like Mario Party <laughs> The pain of wanting to speed on a game like Mario Oh man I don't, I don't even want to imagine <laughs> Let's one day try to get into the mind of because that's a whole other level uh, <laughs> that probably none of us can achieve. <laughs> oh my freaking kidding me So considering there's around um, underestimate, uh, like how would you say your current state on your bingo card is looking like? Um, I'd say it's average. 
Yeah, it's not super fast, but it's not super slow either. Yeah, because considering it's a double bingo, looking at the... You guys should... Yeah, you can almost kind of tell where exactly we're trying to go. The lines start to connect. I just would like to take this quick moment to do a little um, on the Binding of Isaac um, incentive that, it, that will be closed uh, quite soon, considering the run will be, well, uh, around half an hour from now. Um, it will be on the Binding of Isaac... Bleh, I, ca I can't talk anymore. <laughs> the Binding of Isaac after plus, uh, and it will be a seated bonus run with the Zazzle and Mega Blast as a start. Um, so there's still time, but it's starting to, to, to close in, um, so let's see what happens, uh, but that's the, the really interesting if it happens, so I'm really hoping that this goal will be met. I'm about to do the bingo level. Oh, bingoception! Nice. Please take good. forever. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, as, nice. yeah, as you can see, I basically have to make a, a three-way. I, I have to make like a, a bingo out of three eight balls. It's kind of like tic-tac-toe in a way. In fact, it's probably more like tic-tac-toe, if anything. <laughs> really? First try. Really? Wow. And when I say first try, I mean it didn't die. So, I mean, definitely not the fastest one has done it, but... Okay, I thought you meant like, oh, I just got it in the first three shots. Oh, no. That's lucky. <laughs> yeah, that's lucky. No, I did not do that. <laughs> Could you feel that little pain in the voice? <laughs> uh, the... Really? <laughs> that, was, that was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that level is probably like the infamous, infamously the most dreaded level in an all mission speedrun. I also had that, uh, the fastest IL time for Bingo for a while, but then IU took it from me. Thank <sighs> you. 
That was stupid. What? Okay. Oh, <laughs> okay. That's not good. That's not okay.
Alright, I think I'm getting pretty close to the end. I only got, I'd say, two levels left. Two? What? Okay. I really hope it's not two. Okay, um... <laughs> doing one right now, and then afterwards I have to find the last level. I don't know where it's gonna be. I might have to... I may, ha I may have to do some other levels to find it, so not all hope is lost.
Alright, that is one bingo down. We've got one more to go. Not GG yet. Well, even one bingo is still a bingo, but you're not done. But still, GG for that yeah. uh, one so far. <laughs> yep. Okay. Uh, now I gotta find... Um, <laughs> There really aren't that many brush levels. You see, you know. <laughs> um, That's kind of what I'm doing right now. Alright, I'll start with here. That's right, you're going for- yeah, you're going for the same one. And you're doing yep. blasters as well. Yeah, I've got one more blaster level to do, but I figured I'd find that on the way. Because I don't know where anything is. Yeah, I have to do a couple more levels. So I just can't think of a, a brush level right now. I only need one more, too. Alright, come on. And no, none of these have brushes. <laughs> one in this line. Oh, but I have to do this one. Oh, I actually made that. So close, yet so far away. And that's one bingo for me. Oh man, this is gonna be close, actually. And we're going for the same one.
come on, no. Where is it? I know it's here. I will scat I will go across the entire line if I have to. Why? No, I did not hit that. Gosh dang it. Please be the next one. No, come on! <laughs> Where is it? I, I should have gone the other way. Dang it. At least these are short levels. Okay, all right, I'm pretty sure it's after this level. You said that like the past three levels. I know. <laughs> okay, don't need to remind me. Lies, deception. See, I'm, I'm just proving that I can just do a bunch of levels and still complete my goal. Because that's how talented I am, totally. There you go. I'm, I'm, I'm just stalling. Here it is, here's the level, all right. Finally. <laughs> Thank you. 
Alright, so we're going to come up on time for me really soon. It's going to be when test complete appears on the screen. Okay, I noted, getting ready for time. Oh, I think I'm, I'm just going to make oh S. Oh my god, I really hit that death plan. Okay. Oh, come on. Come on, hit, hit the... Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay, and... Time. GG. GG. GG's in the chat. Just underestimate. Let's go. That is actually epic. <laughs> Are you doing pink boomerang? You think you got enough time to finish soon? Um, I don't think so. I've got like three more brush levels, and I don't know where any are. <laughs> I do not have my brush levels memorized. If you just want to tell me where like all of them are, that would be great. <laughs> um, well, I don't know what your map looks like. Um, let's see. You're not watching the stream? Come on, dude. Oh, let me see. All right. Well, I, I, I paused it so I could save um, some frames. Uh, let's see. I guess a heavy brush level is um, uh, E10, Crate Buster. There's two in there. Oh, that's... The... Yeah, that's down here. Okay. I have to get two, two levels to do that, though. Um, but there's two there. Um, there's, there's Ride With Me, there's one brush. I know it's a very dreaded level, um, but it's, it's a brush. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you probably got these, but there was two on DO7, Target Buster. Um, I got one from, uh, Toastmaster Station. Another dreaded level. Wait, is Toastmaster the boss? Yes. Oh, that is a brush on it? Yep. It's the hardest one, though. Um, there's also one on JL4, Footloose. Um, any percent level. Yeah. Um, what else? And the last one I got that I searched for was the one on CO7, Totally 8-Ball Station. It's the timer one. I think I've already gotten that one. So and that's a really sad death. Okay, so that's one. So just to ask, um, how long do you estimate um, to finish? Because... Yeah, it's gonna be a while. We should probably just end it here, I mean. Yeah, if you because if we can still play for like maybe, but if you feel you can't get it done within that time, then maybe, uh, indeed we can end it there because we're already a bit uh, behind schedule already. So it, it's however you want. Like, what what do you think? Nah, we're good to end it here. I think. Okay, sounds good uh, then. Yeah. Um. Well, GG to you both. In any case. Yeah, um, yeah GG. So. How would you reflect on on this run overall? Um, I feel like it was um, pretty average. I'm glad we were able to um, make about estimate. Um, I had some really embarrassing deaths. I died on, on Girl Power Station twice. And oh no. That's unfortunate. <laughs> um, because you lose a lot of time when you die on that stage.
Um, I haven't failed that stage in a while, so I was kind of pissed, um, but whatever. Um, and I just had some dumb deaths here and there, but that's pretty average for me, really. Um, I'm pretty proud of this run. I, I was just overall just kind of having a good time. No, this was a really close one for sure. Um, oh yeah, definitely. As usual, I had a lot of dumb deaths that I really shouldn't have. Um, and also, I like I usually do, I don't really know what I'm going for until probably way later than I should. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. you know, it always kind of comes around one way or the other. So this is a pretty close one. I felt good about it. Yeah. And that's the beauty yeah. of it. As long as you enjoyed it, and despite how, some uh, what would be the proper word? Because you know, something with bingos. You know, as you were saying, sometimes you start off you're a bit unsure what you're gonna do. You can try and plan things around. There's always an element of unpredictability that comes with it, and yet you still manage. Um, the further it goes, and then to start, okay, this is what I'm doing, and that's the beauty of it, really. So. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful run, I'd say. Um, is there anything you'd like to say, perhaps, to people who might potentially be interested in picking split two up, speed running slash doing bingos? Um, it's a lot of fun. Definitely consider it. Um, just you know, if you're fine, you're not enjoying multiplayer on anymore. Just hop on to single player. Try to do some speed running. Um, if you get you know it, it's really fun once you get into it i promise that yeah and we're all uh happy to help you uh learn whatever category you want or if there's usually one of us available for bingo if you want to learn how to play bingo we're always happy to uh play some splatoon we're kind of the last active players really <laughs> um, yeah is there but... perhaps like a speedrun.com link or a discord yeah there's a discord link on speedrun.com Yes, yeah, so let me see. Um, okay, because yeah, I found there we go the speedrun.com link for Splatoon 2. So if anyone's interested, um, you can check out um, the leaderboards over there and of course the Discord server if you're interested in picking this game up. Um, and yeah, thank you so much. Um, is there any last thoughts you'd like to say before, before we move on to intermission? Um, well, thank you for having us on here. This has been great. Um, always nice to do something for a good cause. Uh, shout outs to Liam G two five in the chat. He's a hey. good friend of ours, um, and he looks like he's been here for most of the stream. So shout outs to you, buddy. Oh yeah, Liam has been here for pretty much the entire thing. So indeed, clap up. <laughs> All right, and yeah, thank you so much. GG, Pink Boomerang. GG. Awesome. Well, thank you, guys. And um, so next up, we're going to have uh, the Binding of Isaac uh, Rebirth Plus, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Afterbirth, sorry. <laughs> Afterbirth Plus uh, with Shigen as the runner. It will be a triple bingo. Um, and we will start that after a short mission. Um, so thank you all and, um, see you soon.
Okay, so, um, let's briefly talk, um, while we're here waiting, uh, to talk about, um, the upcoming incentives, and, um, not just that, but also, um, the prices and everything that you guys need to know about what's happening with Bingo Fund 90, because we've got a lot to plan. Um, so, we're at... We're currently sitting at a total of $180. Um, it looks like, unfortunately, we were uh, to reach the Binding of Isaac seeded bonus Zazzle and the last start. Um, technically, it could still be filled um, if it were to be, if the amount left could be donated like right now, uh, since this is the run that we're still waiting for. Um, so if there, uh, if someone suddenly decides to pop up and do that, it'll be amazing. But most likely no. But hey, you know there's lots of goals to donate to, so um, there's definitely gonna be something for everyone. Uh, for instance, um, later on in the marathon, we have Paper Mario, and some of the goals include. Um, so one of them is a fifty dollar objective. Um, which, if filled, the chat will get to choose the bingo line that the runners do. So that's that one is pretty interesting. Um, and another one uh, that is also for Paper Mario for one hundred dollars, uh, currently filled at ten dollars already, will be about uh, making the game crash, uh, probably um, as a showcase at the end, showing how to crash the game. Uh, this one's really interesting if you really want to know more about how the game works internally um, and if you want to know more generally about glitch hunting and whatnot. This one is going to be really interesting. Um, after that, we've also got the Wind Waker randomizer. Um, that one also has a lot of potential. First off, we've got um, a bit more about the custom player model um, that wins require uh, the runner using um, Link. The current options that we've got are Cloud, Conductor Link, Dark Beat, Grandma, and Cass. Um, so far, no donations have been made for it, um, and Cloud will be the default choice um, if there are no donations. However, there is still a lot of time before that run happens. And, I mean, of it, to me, the idea of seeing Gr sailing the Great Sea of Wanda is funny enough, and so is the idea, perhaps, of seeing Conductor Link. Or maybe Dark Beat, Cast, or, well, Cloud. You know, there's a lot of possibilities with it, so th uh, there's a lot of fun to have um, with that player model um, bit war. There is also, likewise, in the Wind Waker randomizer, there is another incentive um, which was required accepted to do, um, which is to basically permanently curse Link in the Earth Temple that he's got uh, during that dungeon, and therefore he will be forced to, uh, to play with re reverse controls in that section, and that's going to be really interesting. That will technically become really a challenge, and that's going to be fun to watch for us, <laughs> but terrible for wins. Um, and we've got many, many more. So definitely, there is so much, um, there is so much uh, to donate for. And beyond that, there is also all the prizes. There were the three that were initially presented, which are the Shibi Robot, Binglethon Mug, and the original SNES mug, all available with a minimum donation of $10. Um, however, uh, thanks to Tiber, um, or rather with his new name at Dot Rar, um, who also just recently provided us the um, PAL copies of both Halo and Jet Set Radio Future on Xbox, which are both uh, now considered to be quite rare. So, and likewise, they're both available for a minimum donation $10 to enter the giveaway. So it's really a unique opportunity uh, for you guys to enter this. 
And even if you're outside the PAL region, um, that RA has included notes on how to still play the PAL version on other versions, the NTSC uh, or whatnot. So you could still have a chance, but even if you're outside of those regions, so you definitely can give it a shot. Um, in any case, um, we should be transitioning over to the next run in just a few minutes. So, um, yeah, I will be coming back to you guys later and well, relax, chill and enjoy your time uh, in those few minutes. See you guys later.